Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about R6 and additional Rangers more powerful than the core Power Ranger team, or are they cursed? So, I love additional Rangers. Back in the day, they used to be called Six Rangers until, of course, the Disney era came around and they started changing things up because of that of the Sentai. And so, you know, I really do love additional Rangers. Their costumes are cooler, their morphers are cooler. Um, they are like really, really, really strong and, you know, I don't know, man. It's just like they're so cool. Like when it comes to additional rangers, they're normally silver, gold, and white. Sometimes they're different colors. And so like when it comes to the lightning collections, I end up collecting those a whole lot more than your core team. They're just so boss, you know what I'm saying? But I've noticed something. There is a fundamental flaw in the whole additional ranger thing. And I'm always seeing the same type of comments like online, people talking about, oh, the additional rangers are so strong, they're so powerful, they're more powerful than the red ranger, they're more powerful than the original, uh, the core team. And then I stop and I think to myself, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you stop and you really think about it, they're not really all that powerful. And then it's like they will start off powerful. Don't get me wrong. When they first start out, they're very powerful. But then after a while, they kind of neglect it. Either they become weak after that. Sometimes they don't show up no more um, in the team. And then they will occasionally show up their personalities go from either being really strong to really weak or silly or goofy. And I've noticed a lot of the alien additional rangers always have the same trope of either their world been destroyed, their world's been conquered, their people been enslaved, their people are dead. It's always one of those type things. And so I'm wondering, maybe additional rangers don't deserve the hype that they are given. And that's really sad to say, because there's been a lot of cool additional rangers. But when you stop and think about when you really stop and think about it, the Power Rangers writing team tends to not really know what to do with them or don't really want to seem to focus on them. Like, okay, some good examples. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's go all the way back to Mighty Morphin, to where it all started. With that of the Green Ranger. When Tommy showed up, you know, like he was like, you know, put under a spell to be the Green Ranger. And he was evil. He was kicking Heine left and right. He put Zord on a different dimension. He disabled Alpha. He messed up the command center. He put Jason in an alternate dimension type thing. So he had to face Godar, which left the team at four, scattered and bewildered and everything. He was just t um, tough. He was just boss level and everything. And he didn't even have a weapon at that time. He was just kicking butt. Then he was given the Sword of Darkness and he was really tearing it up. Then he was given his Dragon Dagger and his Dragon Zord. And, you know, he had a cool costume. So the thing about additional Rangers is that, like I said before, the Morphers are either similar to the Ranger core team or they're completely different. Their costumes are basically completely different. And most times they come with like a shield vest. And so when he was no longer brainwashed and joined the team, then the cracks started to show. Like, you know, he was still a cool character out of costume, the civilian form, right? 
But then it's like, you know, you started to notice something. He kept leaving his morpher behind or something like that. Or his morpher would get taken. And so the rangers would do their thing, you know, fighting the monster. Then he'll show up and like bust the move and everything. And then the core ranger team would take out the monster. Very rarely do we ever see him take out the team. And, you know, when... They ran out of footage and had to go to like season two and everything. And Saban paid the like Japanese creators to create more content and everything. They started making Tommy a bit more of the focus and everything, you know. So like we'll see him do some cool thing. I remember that was that one episode. I think the Rangers got. I think they was putting some monster stomach, and only him and Kimberly were the only ones left. And I just remember one episode. He went inside a monster for some reason with this blaster and just started like shooting inside the belly that i remember one time kim used his dragon dagger as like an arrow and she used it with her bow and so you know they were still showing that he's cool and he's strong right but then of course what happened they ran out of sentai footage and saban did not want to change up the suits so they had to write tommy out because there was no more uh, more i guess like you know green sentai footage for them to use and that was the start of making him weak you know at one point it was like you know in season one they had to do the whole green candle thing they had to get rid of his powers and stuff and so they did and so it's like dude if he's so powerful so strong and his powers are so amazing his powers literally got taken out by a candle <laughs> Then, of course, you know, the actor got written off. Then when the actor came back, um, they had to bring back the Green Ranger because he was such a cell and everything. So that's when he started siphoning the powers of, like, the other Ranger coins or Zordon. And he was still weak because of the power drain of, like, losing his powers. And his power would only stay temporarily. He couldn't fight in every battle. He had to um, be sidelined. They couldn't use his Zord for much and stuff. And it just started making him look like such a, a weakling and everything. Then his powers got completely taken away. They had to change up the Zords because, you know, they was using different Sentai footage. Still not changing the suits, but then they brought him back as, of course, the White Ranger. And the White Ranger was pretty powerful and everything, even becoming the leader. And, you know, the White Ranger would whoop everybody's behind and, you know, fight Godar all the time. So the White Ranger was really strong. But when it comes to that of him being the Green Ranger, they had to write it to where it made him look weak to get rid of him off the show. And in essence, this big, powerful person became weak. Now, of course, the White Ranger lost his powers along with everybody else, and they had to do the whole Zeo thing. So now going to Zeo and their thing. When Treya Triforius showed up, he was awesome. He was taking on Wolfbane by himself. He was kicking all the cogs, but, you know, he was a powerful dude. And so, like... Then the, the, the triplets, they wanted to leave the show. So, of course, they had to write them out. And so what happened? They wrote them out by being what? The trope of being weak. And so, like, they separated. They had to go back to their planet to reform and rejuvenate and all this other stuff. Once again, making the Six Ranger look weak. Then they brought in Jason as the Gold Ranger and everybody was thrilled. Only problem was... When Jason was the Gold Ranger, he wasn't as strong or powerful as Trey. Then, of course, he couldn't hold on to the powers. The powers were too strong for that of a human. So you kept seeing him phase in and out of the powers until he had transferred the powers back to Trey and everything like that. Once again, making this top Ranger weak again. And it begs the, the question, well, if the gold zeal powers are not suitable for a human, what about the other ones? They seem to use them pretty fine. But of course, they're powered by the zeal crystal. He's powered by the staff. Maybe it has different properties, but they're supposed to be the same group of rangers. So that's debatable. Then Turbo really didn't have no sixth ranger. And so then we go over to in space. 
in space, we already see the Silver Rangers already out of commission. He was hurt badly back in the past. Once he came back, you know, his power was still weak. He rejuvenated them, and then he was tough. He was whooping everybody's behind. And the thing about additional Rangers is that sometimes they can beat a monster all by themselves. Or they can, like, you know, blow them up, but of course they just go big. So it's not like they're really destroyed. But then I noticed something. Once again, the additional rangers started missing a couple of episodes. They wrote him to where he had to go look, I think, for like his people or something like that. Because what happened? He came from a planet that was like conquered and everything by evil, and his people got misplaced um, throughout space. And, you know, some of them were enslaved and he had to rescue them. Always that trope of like the alien additional ranger. And so, like, he would come back. He would always come back with a new vehicle or something. And it was really strong. And for the most part, Zane was pretty strong. He was just written to be silly. That's another problem with additional rangers. After showing up and being cool, then they start to become immature for some bizarre reason. It's like, why make your top dollar or your top draw, I should say, um silly and everything he was carefree and this is a trope that will plague a lot of additional rangers let's see lost galaxy didn't really have a six ranger magnet defender people don't really know to call him a ranger a ranger knight or what or just an ally so let's just skip that season then we get one of the most coolest seasons ever, like like Speed Rescue. Why? Because we had our very first American Ranger. He was the Sixth Ranger. He was evil. Another trope and everything for an additional Ranger. So he's evil and everything. And so like, um, he's really strong when he's evil. Then what happened when he became good? The same trope. He starts to become a little weaker and everything. He gets that tattoo on his back and that starts to like drain him and hurt him. And if he uses his power too much, it will bite and destroy him. So once again, they're making the toughest ranger of the team weak and everything. Once he gets it off, then what happens? He goes off and, um, and look for a way to get rid of the demons. Why? Because there is no Sentai um, Titanium like sentai person so saban was cheap and didn't want to keep making original content so he just wanted to use the sentai and so we got robbed of the very first american ranger and he disappeared for the remainder of the series until the end and that was such a letdown once again the additional ranger disappears from like a show then we had, I think, what was it? Time Force, I believe. And with Time Force, we have another bad ranger. Um, he's more of an anti-hero, not so much evil. And this additional ranger was interesting because he was red. And so in a way, he's not really an additional ranger because if he would have had his own team, he would have been the red ranger leader. But since he's part of this team, now officially, he is considered a six ranger. And he was extremely tough. He could destroy monsters on his own. He had his own mega battle and everything. And, but the problem is, is that like, you know, he would disappear from the show because he's not really part of the team. So he'll do things with his own, like, you know, police force type people and then eventually like show up and stuff. And for the, but for the most part, Eric was tough until the ending when he had to give his morpher up to um, that of Wes and everything. He was hurt, of course. <laughs> Then we have Wild Force, and Merritt was somebody who's lived for like over a thousand years, was evil when he came back and everything, got free, did the whole loner thing, then he came back. I don't really remember too much about Wild Force, I really don't like that season, but you know, they have the trope of him and his, since it's been a thousand years, his people are all dead, so that's that tragedy that he has. He's not really so much an alien, actually I don't know what the heck he is and stuff. 
but he was really powerful and stuff. Um, but like I said, I don't really remember much. So let's go on to Ninja Storm. And Ninja Storm is very unique. Ninja Storm starts off with a core team of three. They get two additional rangers, making it a five team. But their two additional rangers' costumes are different than theirs. Their morphers are different than theirs. Are the Thunder Rangers considered additional rangers or just part of the team? See, it's a bit confusing because they're technically part of their own team. But for the most part, let's just consider them the core of five. So then that would make Cam the sixth ranger and he's samurai, completely different from ninja. His costume's awesome. His morphers just kind of, eh. I mean, it's a spear ball, so whatever, but his costume is awesome. One of the best green ranger costumes we ever had since Tommy. And he's really powerful, but then I noticed something. He got his butt kicked the next time, like, you know, he went off on his own. Then, all of a sudden, he just doesn't really fight with the team that much. He's mostly at Ranger Ops and everything. And I just remember thinking to myself, why is he always at Ranger Ops and he's now a Ranger? Then when they would show him fighting, they didn't utilize a lot of the cool Sentai footage of him. Especially where his sword turns into like a baseball and stuff. A baseball bat. And so, for the most part, it was mostly the core ranger team that seemed more powerful than him. And I believe he was the first to get his powers destroyed in there, I think. So it's kind of like, not only would he disappear being at Ranger Oz, but he would constantly get his butt kicked and stuff. What happened to this amazing green samurai power we heard so much of, and he went on a journey to go get? So once again, they kind of make him weak in that regard and stuff. Then we have another tricky season, Dino Thunder. So we have Tommy, who's the Black Ranger, and Tommy got his powers di um, at a different time than the core three Rangers. And his morpher is different. His costume is similar to theirs, but he has like the shoulder like guards and everything. And, but for the most part, he does look very similar to them, even though his morpher is different. And he has an addition to that of like, you know, his outfit and his weapon is different from theirs on his side. But for the most part, let's consider him the core four. So then Trent will be the additional ranger and he is the fifth. Well, he's another evil ranger who possesses the power of a dragon and stuff. And his power, his weapon is that of a dagger. Isn't that interesting? Just like, you know, the first green ranger, but also turns into a sword. And then the green ranger had a sword at one point. But anyway, Trent was started off evil and everything. Trope that's been used way too many times with additional rangers. Um, he turns good. But after that, he does appear with the team a lot. Um, and he's a really good fighter and very strong. But for the most part, they just kept having him fight his clone a lot after that. And so he was strong. But it's like, it's weird because like he's supposed to be so powerful. When he showed up, he was extremely powerful. After he turned good, he was a little weaker than what he used to be and stuff. Even to the point Connor seemed a whole lot more powerful than him. Connor would tap into so many different power settings and stuff. And it's weird because sometimes when you do have that additional ranger, the red ranger, um, sometimes even the core team, but mostly the red ranger always seems stronger. Why is the Red Ranger stronger if technically the additional Ranger is considered the strongest? Then you have SPD. Then we have multiple, like, you know, um, additional Rangers and stuff. We had Cat Ranger, Shadow Ranger, and Omega Ranger. And one's black, white, and the other one's kind of white, orange. I don't know really what to call her. But, like, you know, Doggy Kruger. The Shadow Ranger was extremely boss when he showed up. Then he will only show up if the Rangers ever truly really needed him. So he was kind of not really there helping the team out that much. Then once Omega Ranger showed up, he mostly was um, Shadow Ranger was basically sidelined after that. 
and the old Mega Ranger showed up a lot as the additional Ranger. And he's very powerful. His powers come from the future, not that far um, ahead, maybe 10 years in the future. Um, because he looks like an adult or at least in a teen when he takes his helmet finally off and Sam was no more, but like a 10 or something like that year old boy. So probably like seven or 10 years past. And since like the monster came from the future, his powers came from the future. He was really strong, very tough. But in that first appearance, the core team proved to be stronger than him. And I don't recall Sam really destroying any monsters on his own unless it was a team up episode and stuff. And so it's weird because this dude literally can make his hand like, you know, vibrate very quickly and move at a fast pace to catch bullets and stuff. The other Rangers came and do that. But yet the other Rangers as a core team were strong enough to defeat this monster from the future who's supposed to be very powerful. And then Sam will just mostly just use to just like, you know, de um, do um, grunt work, cleanup work and everything when it comes to fighting monsters. It was really your core team that proved that they was more powerful than that of the additional ranger and stuff. And once again, with Doggy Kruger, his planet basically got like taken over, his people enslaved, if not dead. And it's always that trope. And as for Cat, the Cat Ranger, Dude, her morpher only worked for an hour. After that, she was never seen again. And she was powerful when she showed up, but she was just sidelined after that. And as for Nova, Nova just showed up in the last episode. <laughs> I, come, I forgot to even mention her. And then, so after that, we have Mystic Force. And Mystic Force has a couple of, like, you know, additional rangers. A white ranger, a gold knight ranger, and then I guess Liambo is still considered a red knight ranger. Well, Udana had her staff taken from her, and she was no longer able to morph into the white ranger. So she got completely sidelined throughout the entire series. Um, the Solaris knight, knight ranger dude. He was really powerful in there, I think. And for the most part, he remained strong. Same with that of Wolf Ranger or whatever his name was and stuff, Liam Bo. For the most part, he was pretty strong. But once again, the, but then they got their powers taken from the main bad guy. But the core team proved to be stronger than the additional Rangers. It's like the additional rangers are just there for like a boost or a pick me up to help the team out. But then the core team is still strongest. And so what season came out there? Oh, Operation Overdrive. And we have Tizon. Tizon came in. Um, did he come in bad? I think he did. Then he turned good. Then he turned to a ranger and he was really strong and everything. Then they did the trope of once again, his planet being destroyed. Once again, he's kind of vacant from the team and kind of disappears. Doesn't always morph with the core team. And then I remember one episode with him and Rose, they made him silly and kind of goofy because he's an alien. Now, I do like it when they make the aliens aloof and not really know what's going on on Earth, but they made him a little too silly at times. And so here's this very powerful, very strong ranger, once again, getting reduced to either a comedic relief role or a vacant role and stuff. Um, Jungle Fury is one of those unique seasons again. You have, you know, the um, purple and rhino ranger who's white. And, but you know, the purple ranger is weird. Is, is he an additional ranger or is he part of the core team? Because we have a core team of three again. And so he comes in, his morpher is different. He's very powerful. Then you have that of the Rhino Ranger. He's very powerful. However, the Purple Ranger is a hippie who talks weird. And then the other additional like White Ranger is just a silly comedic relief character and stuff. I don't understand why they make them the supposed most powerful very comedic. And then you have the, you know, the former masters and stuff like that. And that the, they had the um, their spirit ranger form or whatever, 
and they couldn't morph into those those are those animal spirits and everything so those rangers always got sidelined and everything what was next of this rpm rpm is different you have first your core three then you get two more to get added on there and they have different morphers but for the most part those next two are cons um, considered part of the core team then you have the silver and gold ranger who are really truly considered the additional rangers their morphers are different but their costumes still look similar to the other ones problem is with those two the twins they're goofy they're silly they're a little kooky in the head and once again we got that trope of their silly rangers and everything they're immature rangers and they're not aliens that are aloof in the head they're just silly and everything and so they're really powerful they love making things explode but they're just so silly and they're not really all that powerful to tell you the truth after a couple of episodes of getting introduced as for Samurai and the Gold Ranger, I don't remember much about Samurai, so I can't really talk about it. So I don't, not really all that familiar with Antonio other than he is the comedic relief. Once again, we got that trope. And then we have that, um, the Mega Force show. I don't consider Robo Knight a Power Rangers. I don't know why people do. Um... But Orion meets that trope again of like, here he is a comedic um, type ranger. He has a little bit of immaturity to him. His planet got overtaken <laughs> and everything. Um, he is a silver ranger. He is very strong though. It's been a good while since I watched it, but for the most part, he is like really strong. So. He doesn't necessarily fall under that curse, but he falls under the curse of the trope of, oh, look, my planet got taken over and my people been enslaved. Like, so, you know, it's always that trope. And so we got Dino Charge next, which is a season with multiple Rangers. My God, they, the additional Rangers could form their own team <laughs> and everything. And once again, these additional Rangers are scattered throughout the show. Some of them don't show up until like 10 episodes later and everything. And then once we get to that one alien dude who's like a bird, once again, here we are with another planet being overtaken or destroyed. And he starts off bad and, you know, um, this is Zed Wing or something like that. And then, you know he turns good and then you know he's pretty powerful and all this other stuff and then talon ranger who was never truly a ranger you know planet got taken over got turned evil blah 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 you know stuff like that supposed to show up in cosmic fury and stuff and we saw the footage of him and you know and it's just like once again you got all these additional rangers and dino charge and yet they're really absent from the show and everything and they're not really all that powerful a lot of them aren't oy i swear eh, as for ninja steel their gold ranger was pretty powerful so i can give him a pass and i don't remember if he showed up a lot because i try to block that season out my head then of course you have beast morphers and beast morphers is one of those unique seasons again you have a core of three, but then your next two rangers are silver and gold. And I don't remember silver and gold being all that powerful. Silver is nothing but comedic relief. And gold is just a child prodigy who, you know, is nerdy and geeky and stuff. But once again, you know, they're not the most powerful on the show. Then you have Dino Fury. And I got some things to say about that Gold Ranger. <laughs> I don't understand um, Ion. I really don't understand Ion at all. When he first showed up, he was very, very, very powerful. Then 
after that, mm, he still is powerful, but he falls under the dumb trope of being a silly ranger. Granted, he is an alien, and once again, his planet been overtaken, and people are like, you know, scattered and stuff like that. Once again, we go through that trope. It's like the American people don't know how to write anything other than that for like, you know, the additional rangers. But then here's the problem. He was arrogant when he first showed up, wanted to lead the team. He didn't want Zato to be leader. But then quickly after those first two episodes when he showed up, he became the comedic relief ranger to the point of being beyond aloof and to the point of pure immature. Not as immature as the RPM, silver and gold, but he was a close second to them. I get it. He's the alien. He's going to have that aloofness. But he was just too immature. At that time, he thought he was a bird and he just acted weird. And it's just dude was weird man like he was just so immature and i hate when they do that to the additional rangers it's like either they have a tragic backstory they're absent from the show from time to time or they're just comedic relief or they start off evil and so yeah, I don't believe additional rangers are all that powerful. Like, I really just don't. I think they're like a bit stronger than the core. They're like a pick me up booster type ranger. But other than that, once you get like at least after their introduction, after their intro, um, introduction, they become very weak after that. They're constantly getting their butts kicked. Um, they're getting their powers drained and stuff like that or taken away. And they're just really not that powerful and stuff. Like they're, it, It's just a misconception. It's an illusion. We perceive they're powerful because their costume looks so cool. And because their weapons are different and their morphers are different. And their introduction is really powerful. But then after that, it's just their ordinary rangers. And sometimes the Red Ranger or the core team is a lot more powerful than them. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.